Welcome everybody. This is uh, EA Global Summit 2020. I guess uh, a lot of guys would have attended at least a few sessions before. Uh, this is a virtual conference. Uh, I guess you know connecting uh, global EA practitioners both from the consultant side and also from the audience side. And this is uh, Madhav from the organizing team, and uh, we have uh, Han, an enterprise architect, a co-founder of uh, EA Expertise. Uh, and he'll be presenting on the topic architecture visualization by creating wall sized po posters and i he gave a quick sneak peek to me i guess uh, i'll not talk more about it he'll show and uh, it was really exciting and just a quick note uh, before i pass on the ball to him uh, please log your questions uh, uh, for the session in the team's channel we'll post the link in the chat window uh, while we'll be taking up few questions at the end uh, you can have a detailed discussion or even a call with him uh, after the session so thanks once again for joining everybody and uh, 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 over to you han thanks for joining and uh, uh, it's up to you i'll make you the presenter thank you very much Thank you very well, uh, Madhav. Um, I try to make it a, a more interactive uh, presentation than the other ones that I saw. So uh, you see my face, and it's not about my face uh, that you have to look to, but I'm going to show you some things on uh, the webcam. So maybe you can uh, get get that bar and, and, and drag it down a bit, and I will become bigger. Uh, and when you have seen enough, then you can slide it up and even hide my face. Um, good morning. Uh, this session is about creating wall size posters. Well, um, that was a marketing trick uh, because this is not really wall size, but it's still a, a, a rather, uh, rather uh, big, uh, big poster. And I think uh, posters are the way to express your ideas. Uh, the reason I say that will be discussed in this uh, presentation. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself and my partner, uh, Bert Dingemans. Uh, we are expertise uh, consultancy uh, agency in the Netherlands. We do all kinds of coaching, teaching, uh, repository uh, setups, uh, and uh, Sparks integration and creating add ons. You can find us at uh, www.expertise.nl. Uh, I myself uh, use uh, Spark since I think version six, so that's quite some time ago. And uh, as I said in my previous talk, I I know only parts of the tool. Uh, there are a lot of menu items that I explain to customers, but I'm not really uh, acquainted with. Uh, I try to use my, myself. I try to use uh, Sparks as uh, as much as out of the box as possible. So maybe I show you things, and you think, "Well, that can be done in a different way." So please uh, help me there. Um, I uh, I think for myself that uh, creating uh, my expressing my ideas with uh, Sparks is, is the best uh, way to go. <clears throat> okay, posters. Um, I start with the bottom line. Um, as an architect, uh, I think you have to be a visual kind of guy. Uh, in this time, it's it's very difficult to convey uh, just text to uh, to others, and if you think about the work of an architect, then you think, uh, let's, for, for instance, let's uh, take a, a civil architect. That's the one who has a, a big drawing board and I uh, uses pen and paper to create something. And at the end, he rolls, rolls it up and takes it under his arm and goes to his, uh, his customer. And that's a way to, uh, uh, to start uh, talking and to express ideas and exchange ideas. Uh, I have created a number of posters uh, in the past, not always with Sparks, but just to, to give you an ID. Um, if, I, if I show something like this to a customer, uh, then I got his attention. And the reason I do that 
is because uh, it, it works like this. When you come in, it's nicely rolled up and then uh, say that your uh, CEO is over here, then you say, okay, can, can you hold this for me? And then in, when, we, when you open the poster, you both are focused on what's inside. It's like opening a present. And I found that very interesting, uh, uh, a very interesting move because from that moment on, you get the, the interest of the, the guys and the girls that you want to talk to and convey your message to. Uh, another reason to create posters is that uh, people or some people are not uh, very good in reading, but are uh, are more visual uh, visually. So using uh, posters to get discussions going is is a, is a very nice interest. Um, in this time of of being agile, uh, it's it's a good way of of uh, expressing ideas uh, in an agile way. Uh, you can put those uh, those posters close to uh, behind you, like I do right here. And if somebody comes in, then you can have the discussion on this poster. Um, but it's more worthwhile to put the poster in places that people are working together, like uh, the coffee machine of the, the area or the area where they have their daily stand-ups. And, um, and if, if you go to the CEO, just take it under your arm and, and go there and, uh, uh, and convey your ideas. Um, this poster uh, I made for a, a company I worked for, and it uses a, a certain kind of of, uh, of layout. And that layout I got from uh, a methodology that was uh, devised by a friend of mine here in the Netherlands. It's called uh, Dragon One. And a lot of ideas that I will show you later on come from that method. Dragon One is an open method. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, you can find information about it on the Open Group site, but also on the DragonOne.com site. And what what Dragon One does is uh, it has four axes uh, and bases. Uh, there's a way of thinking. So you have to think about meta models, architectures, enterprises, and such, and, 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 and cultures even. There's a way of working. How do you work as an architect uh, to convey your messages? There's a way of representing, and making posters is one of them. And there's a way of supporting. Uh, it has all kinds of, of templates available and reference posters that you can use. Um, if you go to the website on the resources, you find uh, posters like this. They always have the same uh, setup. There's on the left side, are uh, they express the, the, the mission and the vision, the identity of the company and the stakeholders and all kinds of information about objectives and requirements. Then on the right side, uh, it talks about the core uh, principles and concepts to enable what's, what's up here in the middle. And that can be uh, here. It's a, a kind of uh, mapping of, of processes to to uh, the application landscape, but it can be different uh, things. Uh, in, in this in this poster, I wanted to get all the stakeholders involved uh, into um, into the project. So I started to talk to them, and I used uh, pictures from their website uh, that showed familiar faces. And when you do that, then people are, are more like, oh, that's me. So you want something from me. And that's very, very helpful. You get their intention almost immediately. Um, on the bottom, there's information about uh, the poster that's created, uh, some, some, some extra uh, visuals uh, that you need to discuss. The, uh, the, the, the center of the poster, and there's a legend, and of course there's a list of, of reference and documents. <clears throat> so that's that's the basic idea that I have in all uh, all my posters that I create with Sparks. Well, 
except for this one, because this was a starting poster for a discussion with the business. And I had don't I didn't have time to create all those uh, fancy stuff around it. <clears throat> so posters are your way to the business, I think. Um, I will show you an example. Um, here on the left, you see uh, the full uh, size of the poster, and you see that it's a really uh, it's a really big one because you only see here a, a little uh, a little part of it. So when I make it smaller and smaller, you can imagine that uh, this uh, this is a different way of working. <clears throat> You need uh, big screens, etc., for this to, to make it more uh, handy. I will walk around uh, the edges of the poster. Uh, inside the poster, it's it's just a diagram, and in this case, it's a, it's a it's a poster about how to deal with uh, internal processes after uh, an external customer uh, makes a call or uh, sends in an email. Um, but I like to walk alongside the, uh, the poster to give you an idea of the uh, things that I have done here. Uh, in the top left of the um, poster, there's always an area for the logo. And if you put your comp the company's logo there, then they know, okay, that's, that's up for me. Uh, they created it especially for me. Um, then there's the area for identity, mission, and culture. And what I've done is I used uh, packages um, to to, uh, uh, to put in there because the nice thing about that is um, if you if you extend the list of elements. If you extend the list of elements that you show in the package, then it will be automatically uh, transferred uh, into this uh, in this package. So what you have to take care about is that this list might be a growing list, and that you uh, end up with a list like this, and it, it overshadows an uh, other list uh, underneath. So uh, here it's a wrong example because the the uh, the, side, the, the distances between those packages are too small. And when uh, my, my model is growing, uh, then this list will grow and will overlap uh, parts of uh, other lists. I decided to use it like this because it's very easy to do. It's just dragging a package onto the, the diagram and then that's, that's that. So I have all kinds of uh, areas I created. Uh, boundaries for that and those boundaries I have fixed um, uh, fixed on the on the sheet so I, I talk about ambitions and goals uh, issues and concerns uh, business and IT requirements uh, I put information there about the diagram so what's the title of the diagram what's the version what's the day of change or creation who's the author that's very important. Then when we move to the right, uh, we see uh, what are we trying to, uh, a text that says what we are trying to explain in this diagram. Uh, so the, the message of the diagram, then there is an area for some, uh, some, some visuals, some more visuals, uh, a legend. So in this diagram, I I only used uh, very simple symbols uh, to express uh, the the message that I wanted to convey. Uh, reference documents. I didn't have any uh, the risks, so we are now on the right side of uh, uh, of the diagram. Uh, a list of uh, projects that are required to achieve. Uh, what we try to express here. 
uh, the principles are rules that we want to obey to or that we use to, to guide the project and the concepts and standards that we are using. Uh, so one of the standards that we use is uh, the ISO 9001, uh, et cetera. And we have some, some concept in the organization, like these are two teams that have to be uh, created to achieve this, this handling of the processes. And of course, there's an area for your own uh, logo as well. So this is basically the setup of every uh, every poster, and the the inside is uh, is to be changed uh, as well. So this is the real message that we want to achieve. So we, uh, in this case, we have a lot of processes uh, and, and people around it that initiate those processes, etc. <clears throat> so this is just a small example. Uh, I have another example. Uh, that's this one, and I, I like to show the poster in real life. Uh, this is a, a smaller size poster, but uh, you see that uh, this, the, the setup that I created is, is, is uh, totally uh, the same, but the message inside is different. And here um, I created the what I try to express here is that there are a number of processes for creating uh, several uh, different IT um, uh, products and services. And the nice thing about this poster is that you see a lot of puppets inside, and that uh, because this is a rather small company, each puppet is a person in the company, so he can recognize himself and and now sees what's his position in relation to the others. Uh, I used a number of uh, beautiful colors uh, to express my things. And the interesting thing about uh, Sparks is that you can include uh, different uh, diagram frames inside a single poster. So that makes it even more interesting. This poster I created in uh, a couple of hours and I worked, and then I worked for a company holding uh, four CEOs, and one of them, uh, and I explained them uh, how this should work because it was the start of the reorganization of, uh, of of their company, and I explained how this worked, uh, this worked, uh, what my ideas were, and one of the uh, CEOs came to me afterwards and said, "Can I borrow your poster? Because uh, tonight I'm going to a friend uh, to start." Uh, talking about setting up a new business. And that's what he did. And he took my poster. Uh, he said, he, he was very humble. I said, can I uh, borrow your poster for tonight? I said, well, OK, you paid for it, so you get it. And the next morning, he came uh, back to me and he said, well, thank you very much, Han, because based on this poster uh, and the talk I had with my, my friend, we started uh, we have uh, a new plan for a new business. So in that case, um, and, and that business turned out to be very successful. It's a, it's a running business right now and it's doing very good. Um, so that's, uh, maybe that's, uh, that's the interesting thing about posters. It can be the start of, um, uh, of, uh, of new businesses. So that's where I'm very proud of. Uh, I'm proud of showing you this poster. Um, I, I, uh, on the screen, you see uh, the, the the inside of the poster from, from from close by. And what's interesting about uh, Sparks is that you can uh, uh, in, introduce uh, diagrams that you have created somewhere else. So uh, a poster can be a combination of all kinds of diagrams that you have already in place. So the only thing you have to think about is then, okay, what, what do I see at, at, uh, at the edges of the poster? Because the insights might be there already. <clears throat> That's an interesting way of working. Okay, how do you create a poster like this? Um, 
if you create a poster, it, uh, it has uh, a number of things you have to take care about. Um, the nice thing about uh, Sparks is that, uh, especially in Sparks 15, it uses uh, uh, diagrams that scale very well. So you don't have to be concerned about uh, diagrams that have to scale uh, to a wall size. That, that, that works. The problems you might have is if you include uh, diagrams of our, our, our JPEGs inside uh, your poster, and it, they look fine on, on, uh, on, 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 uh, on the screen, but if you uh, start to, uh, to scale them up, then you see that uh, right in the middle of this poster, there's, there was a JPEG that, had a, has, that did not have the right resolution, and that didn't scale well, and so it's, uh, it didn't scale well and doesn't look nice. Look nice. So it's very important that if you put in some 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 JPEGs, uh, that you use them in the, the right resolution. Um, okay. Then the page setup is very important. Um, uh, when you when you go to uh, properties of the diagram and you go to diagram. You can set up the poster size here. It's wise to scale to one page, of course, but here you can say, okay, I want to scale up till uh, A1 or B1. Uh, and that's your starting uh, canvas. Um, don't worry if you use A1 and you want to scale even bigger to A0 or larger than A0, it will work but uh, you might uh, have to do some tricks at the, the printer or the plotter. That works. <clears throat> um, you can imagine that when you are on a, on a large poster, it's very handy to see where you are. So uh, having the pen and zoom uh, dialog box uh, available is very handsome. It's very helpful. The search story is very helpful. Then, if you start making uh, the poster here, I start just just creating something. Uh, as a reference, I put just an element in the lower uh, right corner. So you know, uh, so you can see in the pen and zoom uh, where you are, and you can uh, move all things, all, all stuff around if you zoomed in, and see where you end up. So this is this is a first element that I put somewhere, so I know the size of of the canvas I'm working with. Um, having a, a big screen is very helpful. Uh, at home, I have uh, better equipment than, than most uh, organizations I with, work with. I have a setup of two uh, 4K screens of uh, 28 inches, and that works uh, very very good. Uh, you can uh, span uh, sparks over the two screens. Um, then uh, creating diagrams is, 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 is totally up to you. But uh, if you want to uh, have uh, uh, elements that you don't want to show as, for instance, uh, uh, Archimate uh, application component, but as, a, a, as an icon or uh, as, a, as an image, then you can uh, do that as well. Um, <clears throat> one thing is that you can, it's easy to find uh, JPEGs, uh, PNGs, or SVG images uh, on, uh, on the web. And uh, then the next step is that you need to convert them to, uh, if, if, you use a, if you want to use them as, uh, uh, or a replacement images for your uh, element, then you have to convert them to an EMF or WMF uh, format. That's a factorized format. And um, you can do that easily on, on this website. So my way of working is that I'm going to find uh, a, a, a diagram, uh, uh, an icon or a symbol, then I download that, 
uh, to my uh, to my system. Download that to my system. Yes, there it is. Um, I open the folder. It should be somewhere here. And then I go to the convert IO website and choose uh, choose the diagram. I choose the choose the, uh, the 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 image, and then I can can convert it to whatever I like, like uh, W. And then I start converting. And later on, I use that uh, image to include it uh, or to attach it to my um, my stereotype uh, my stereotyped element. Uh, you can do that by um, where is it um, using uh, this if you if you use if you create a new stereotype you can add a meta file to that and it will be uh, uh, Will be in, uh, attached to uh, to the to the, uh, the stereotype, so you can say, uh, okay, show it, show my stereotype as an image, and then it, uh, all the uh, the elements will of the same stereotype will change into that image. Um, the only problem here is that uh, basically I use uh, Archimate the whole time and. The Archimate MDG does not allow to add a different uh, stereotype or an extra stereotype to it. So I have to change those uh, elements by myself. Uh, that means that um, I have to say, okay, uh, I want to change the appearance from the default. Uh, yes, from the default. To an alternate, uh, for, for instance, like this. And now I have for the same um, element, I have a, a different uh, different appearance. And uh, this is done automatically if you uh, create a stereotype with this uh, this shape attached to it. Uh, then it's it's very easy. And if you drag it on the screen, then uh, they will show it in that in that way. But it's not possible, as far as I know, and maybe that's a question for the uh, team session. Uh, it's not possible to show a diagram in in the formal way, like uh, like this, or uh, in in the way that that you show here in, in in the images. So I like to know how it's possible to switch between uh, the formal representation of this uh, diagram. And the, the, the informal, more poster like uh, version of it. Uh, okay. Um, I, I, that, said, that means that I'm, I'm looking some, some uh, I'm looking for something uh, like the alias functionality. If you fill in the alias functionality in in your uh, in your elements, then you can say here use alias if available. So what I like to have is use uh, alternate image if available. Then I can say, okay, once uh, I, I want to show my diagram as a, in a formal uh, modeling language notation or in a in a in a more image uh, more expressive uh, notation that might be closer to the uh, the understanding level of my CEO. Um, okay. Use of colors. Uh, you have to be very um, uh, careful with using colors. Using too much colors, like I showed you in in this uh, in this post, it might be very overwhelming. Uh, but here, all the colors do have a certain uh, meaning. They represent uh, represent parts of the organization, so departments of the organization. Uh, and if you make more posters, it's very important that you use uh, the same colors for the same things 
uh, but using the colors is also the, what kind of colors you use is also determined by the culture of uh, of the country you live in. I can remember that um, 25 years ago I was working for for Philips in a, in a, a new kind of innovative project, and there was a user interface created uh, by somebody in the team. And when I looked at the user interface, I said, "Okay." I don't know who it is, but he is not from the Netherlands, and that was indeed the case. He was uh, from Turkey, and in Turkey, they use more vibrant colors than we use in the Netherlands. So that makes it uh, that said to me that it's important that you try to find the right colors for the organization you create the posters for. They have to not maybe not too sparkling uh, in the Netherlands. We were more uh, in the, 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 the pastel like uh, colors. Uh, that's something you have to take can can take into consideration. There are also signal colors. Uh, if you want to create overlays and that's really uh, easy uh, nowadays with the layer functionality of, of Sparks, it's easy to create uh, boxes uh, or, or show elements in a different color. But uh, there are some colors that you have to be very careful with. Uh, you can imagine that uh, if you convey your, uh, your, your diagram to your uh, CEO, uh, he will be allergic to red. Um, if, if something is red, it's like a traffic light. It's, oh, this is panic. Uh, so we have to do something about it. And if it's green, he will relax and say, okay, well, I don't have to take care about that because that's, that's doing okay. And then there's yellow that's, that's somewhere in between. And since the Corona and the Netherlands, we also have a code orange. So there is a difference between code yellow and code orange. So these four colors are signal colors for our culture and probably most of the Western countries use the same uh, colors for signals. <coughs> Yeah, if you want to be uh, very uh, handsome with posters, then you have to take care uh, about the composition. My background is, is also, uh, my, my main hobby is, is making photos, so I'm a photographer. Uh, and if you want to do, uh, show something, uh, if you want to make an easy photo, then you use the rules of third. Most of the time they are pretty good uh, in the uh, things that you want to show. Um, and what the rule of says is that you put the essentials of the image on the crosses uh, that you see here in this in this in this photo. But that's a, that's the reason that this photo is nice because uh, the things that really matter in this uh, photo are on the crossroads of those uh, of those lines. And in this case, uh, on the right side of the image, there is nothing. And that's something that's interesting if for when you create posters as well, because uh, if, well, in our culture, we we'll, uh, we'll read from left to right. So beware if you work for a uh, country where uh, organization in a country that people are used to write from uh, right to left, then you have to, change, uh, you have to flip this image. Um, because uh, on, the, on, 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 the, on the right side here, you see nothing. And that means that there is probably some room for improvement or a motion that's going from left to right. Uh, so left, in, in this case, left is the as is situation and right should be the to be situation. Um, because our culture uh, reads from left to right. And uh, that also means that there's room for improvement. So these are uh, things that you can use in your posters as well. Another uh, very uh, interesting concept is uh, pattern, uh, pattern repetition. So try to uh, make your diagram uh, a repetition of patterns. Uh, that makes it easy, easy to understand because similar patterns, uh, if you uh, uh, explain one pattern and the, all the other patterns will, uh, will be the same or the same kind of pattern, well, the same kind of patterns will have the same explanation. 
and that makes it uh, uh, for you a good opportunity to group uh, things together into a, a pattern. Um, using fonts is also very important. Um, uh, by default, uh, all the uh, appearances of uh, Sparks uh, use uh, a font type that is too small. Uh, that's like this. If you create a poster, then it's very important that it's readable from a distance. So it's better to use uh, a default setting for your uh, elements that more fill the, uh, the the contours of the, uh, or the, the inside of an element. So choosing the right uh, font size is very important. Uh, 12 points like this one uh, scales up perfectly, but also uh, tends to fill up uh, uh, the default uh, element uh, contours pretty well. And of course, uh, choosing the right font is important for readability as well. Here I have uh, used three fonts and it's up to you to decide uh, which font is best readable. Um, <clears throat> and as I said before, uh, it's important that you uh, convey what you want to, uh, to show, what you want to tell from the left to the right or from the right to the left, depending on the culture. Um, Line styles is is, uh, is, is very uh, sorry is very important uh, to use. It's, uh, I prefer the uh, orthogonal square line style because it makes it easier to to, uh, to move them around uh, and try to prevent uh, the crisscross lines uh, because crisscrossing lines makes uh, a kind of spider web and spider webs are do have a nice pattern, but are diff pretty difficult to read. Um, last week, I got a question from a customer and he said, and she, uh, and she said, how can I prevent um, Cadeau lines? Uh, Cadeau lines, uh, that's, that's a nice Dutch word. And it said, uh, 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 a Cadeau is a present and a line is a small line. And what you try to, uh, to tell me is that uh, if you change a diagram somewhere in a repository and you have somewhere else a, a nice uh, diagram, but somebody uh, creates an actual relationship between elements that are on your diagram, uh, then you get them as a present. And sometimes you like them and sometimes you don't. Uh, since version uh, 15.1, of Sparks, um, there's an, a nice um, uh, possibility to prevent you from doing that. So here you see freeze line. And if you <coughs> think that box, uh, at the moment you do that, you prevent that diagram from accepting other relationships that might have popped up because somewhere else in the, in the repository an actual relationship is added. So if you want to prevent your nice poster from those uh, Cadeau lines, it's very wise to set this, uh, to set this uh, parameter. Well, <clears throat> then you have your poster created and it's ready to print. So uh, and it's a good idea to uh, save your uh, poster as a PDF uh, because PDFs uh, have the ability to scale as well and send them to a printer or uh, in my case, I have a print shop on the other side of, of my hometown. And when I say them that I'm going to send a, uh, a poster, then uh, they have the ability to uh, check that uh, within five minutes. Uh, make a, a, a proof print of it and see if all lines and colors are uh, are correct. And that's done by somebody with a, a graphical experience. Uh, so he knows, uh, he or she knows where to look at. And if they say, okay, we're going to, uh, it, it looks nice, 
then I get my bike and uh, by the time I'm at their office, uh, the print is available and I pay a small fee to, uh, to get the poster. Works pretty well. Uh, but there are companies that have uh, big sized uh, printers and that can be used as well. Um, well, this, this more or less concludes uh, my uh, presentation. So uh, my, my main message of this presentation is, as an architect, you should be able to convey your messages uh, uh, in, in, in poster size uh, diagrams. And um, because that's a good way to, uh, to interact with, with others in the team. And you can imagine that, that posts like this uh, will uh, use, will be uh, a source of uh, change. Uh, if, you, if you put it, put it somewhere where everybody can go, then it's easy to make uh, changes to it or scribble on it. Uh, so make sure that's a red pen uh, in the neighborhood so people can uh, express their IDs on the poster as well. So it's it's a, a poster is a common area of uh, for, for people working together. Uh, of course, you can use a whiteboard, but with a whiteboard, you will lose, uh, you, you don't create models. Uh, it can be starting for a starting point for the model though, but <coughs> sorry, it's it's a starter, but not the end. So what I try to do with my customers is at the end of of of, of my project I did with them, I give them a, a, a nice poster as a conclusion of uh, of the project. Well, I hope there are any questions. Um, thank you, Han. Uh, okay, that was an interesting concept, and uh, thanks a lot for the elaborate and uh, extensive presentation. I guess you genuinely shared uh, every single point which you actually do. Not, it's, I can see it's not just a presentation or advice. And um, and uh, from my experience, I can really relate. There are organizations who say, "Hey, uh, our people are not uh, really sticking to the processes." I mean, if there is a team, I guess such posters will definitely help. And you can just mm -hmm. put up the poster maybe in the team's uh, office room, and I guess that would really help them see it. Or uh, I, another example I can think of is, I mean, even if uh, the vision and the missions. So in if you are uh, modeling it in EA, you don't have to do bring in a, a flashy designer to do design something. We can make a, just a wall sized poster and put it near the headquarters or something like that, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I know that 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 architects, uh, from my experience, I know that architects are not as outgoing as they should be. Uh, for instance, I, I work for a, a company right now, and I, I work at the IME department, that's the information management and architecture department. And they have wall size posters in their office. Well, and there are three walls and they're full with, with wall size posters. Uh, but um, that, that room is, is close to a, a big uh, uh, corridor, but the posters stay inside that room. And they even don't go over the threshold. I was talking to one with one of the architects, and he said, "I said, well, these are amazing posters. I'm I'm very jealous of of of, of this. And I, uh, I I even see the project I'm working on uh, was somewhere in the top right corner, so probably more uh, very important. But I can, could see the, the the whole landscape of applications that were out there, and uh, what I what I noticed is that our uh, application had only seven connections to other applications there, but uh, in reality, it had over 25 relationships with all those uh, applications in that landscape. So that poster was telling a story, but it was not a complete story. But the most, uh, the biggest issue was that uh, I was talking to the, the architect uh, and I said, okay, how far do these posters reach? Uh, and I said, do they reach uh, 10, 10 centimeters before the threshold of this room? 
does it come? Uh, do they come at the threshold of the room or do they pass the threshold on the room? And he had to admit that um, they didn't reach further than just the walls. They didn't even reach to the threshold. So uh, I was I was I was pretty amazed that uh, those those architects that uh, spent a lot of energy in creating those those diagrams and posters didn't convey what they have as a knowledge base created as a knowledge base to others in the organization. If they put just got one of the posters and went to the uh, the CIO of uh, of the company. Then the CIO would instantly notice, oh my God, we have a hell of a job to do here because we have to correct all kinds of applications and overlapping applications, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what, 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 what really amazed me that uh, those very clever architects who were able to create uh, those kind of posters uh, were not able to market their ideas. Uh, they had very good ideas on how to change the organization and how to change the application method, but they are not <laughs> able to convey that message. And that's so uh, so worrisome. And that's not the only place I saw that. So as an architect, you have to be more outgoing and, uh, and, and more expressive and, and, and share your ideas, even if these ideas are not correct. And I'm, I'm sure this, this poster is not correct. It has some good uh, good points, but they have also some some points that that are not well thought of. Uh, maybe maybe there is a different decomposition. But even this simple poster uh, led to uh, uh, many discussions within uh, in, in this organization. Uh, because okay, so we have oh we do have primary processes. Oh we do have secondary processes, and the HRM department felt itself very very important, but it's near even the HRM department is not a, sec a secondary process, but a tertiary process. So they are very, very small and, and maybe not important as the primary process is going on. But the interesting thing, the financial department and the HRM department has uh, used the most IT budget that is available, the largest part of the IT budget that is required to run the primary process. Their sub uh, SAP licenses are much more expensive than the licenses that we need uh, to create applications that support the primary processes. And that's, in my opinion, that's ridiculous. But you only get that going if you start discussions on processes like this. There is a whole world behind every, uh, every element you see. Um, but architects know that, but they don't express it. <laughs> I agree. That's, that's, that's the reason why I think posters are very helpful. The other yeah, things I, I see in this, this AI Global Summit, like Prolaborate, EA.x, et etc., et cetera, et cetera are, are very nice tools, um, but they're only part of the story. If, if you, uh, for instance, if you put information inside these boxes. In my previous talk, I talked about empty boxes. If you put information in every box, you can create a document from this or a website uh, on, on, on this information. And then it makes sense to have both the documents and the, and, and, and the posters as well. Wow. Yeah, I agree. So we have some uh, uh, genuine questions coming up. I guess we we'll can at least take a few genuine practical questions. Uh, okay. First one is uh, from Michael. Uh, okay, this is something uh, even when I was thinking about the process, I was uh, thinking, of how do you handle versioning of your posters? For example, V1 and 2, do you create separate posters for each new version? Uh, this, that's, that's the standard IT answer. And the, you know, the standard IT answer is, of course, it depends. Uh, depends on what you try to express. Uh, you can, uh, or what you try to achieve. Uh, if, if I take this poster, I can imagine that uh, in the next version, there will be uh, differences. And then it's not really important uh, because this is, this is a poster that we created while trying to understand the business that the organization is working on. Um, 
ideas change and what we have said in the past might not be important to, to, to keep because it's it's just ongoing investigation of what's what's the setup on the organization of the organization. Uh, so it depends. This this is nice to, to uh, in, in this example, it's nice to get a version number. It has a version number. But uh, keeping uh, previous posters of this version, well, I don't think it, it, it really matters. Uh, I, I, I just start when I when I change this poster, uh, it's, it's this poster and this poster only. So I just get a new version with more elements or things like that. Um, <clears throat> What I, um, but I can imagine that if you, that in some cases it's wise to create a second poster, and of course you can uh, use the the, the clone uh, function in uh, Spark for it, but uh, it's 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 not the first thing I would uh, I would like to. I I think I just uh, create a baseline of this poster and then get on to the the next version. So I can go back to the previous version, or I store it as a, or I make a, a PDF out of it and, and keep the PDF uh, uh, somewhere stored. I can store a PDF in, in, in Sparks in Spark repository as well. But I think this creating posters is an ongoing story. And the nice thing about creating posters this way is that they will grow over time. And um, that's uh, that's very handy handy to have, especially if you okay. create posters that are composed of different diagrams. Uh, then, if you change the diagram, your poster changes as well. That's that's a very very handy feature. Okay, second question on uh, the kind of views. So, when generating a poster content, do you customize the content according to the needs of what stakeholders wish to see? Or do you adopt recommended viewpoints proposed by uh, Archimate? Yeah. Um, yeah. Same uh, same answer as as, as previous. Uh, the same IT answer is uh, it depends. Uh, it it it. I think it's uh, Archimate has as as, as formal. Few points. So, uh, within within uh, if you have a discussion within the architecture community, it might be wise to have uh, or adhere to such a viewpoint. Um, uh, that viewpoint is probably not uh, what the CEO is, uh, wants to know. So, uh, it depends on your public. It depends. Uh, the company I work for right now, it's it's. We are very formal, so we use architecture Archimate viewpoint. But uh, oh, for this company that that uses Archimate, but it's not very specific in it. It's yeah, just my imagination of, of uh, expressing uh, using using Archimate symbols and expressing uh, uh, and connecting some dots. That's that's all I do here. Not a formal viewpoint, I guess, but it helps to explain uh, things to the business. Uh, and, and this 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 poster was created in conjunction with the business. So I didn't make it up myself. It was a discussion. Uh, it was the result of a workshop with uh, post-it notes. A lot of post-it notes. <laughs> okay, okay. I guess we have some more questions on printers, and there's a good feedback from Jerry saying this has indeed helped uh, helped his team. I mean, such ideas have helped his team really. So that's really okay. good to know. And I guess we can take up the rest of the questions in the team's channel. Uh, sure. Once again, uh, okay. thanks a lot, Han, for uh, for the extensive efforts put into this presentation. And thank you, everybody, for uh, taking time to join, give feedback, and ask a lot of uh, genuine questions. Thanks yes, once thank again. You. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Mara. Uh, thank you, Han. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good day, Han. Thank you very Bye. much. And see you in the team's uh, session. Yeah, yeah, sure. Bye-bye.